Hello, welcome to today's episode. So today, I'll be showing you how I painted this Magus using these six colors. Be back with you in a second. So, welcome back. Um, today is something a bit different. Um, anyone who watches the channel knows that I enjoy my historicals. So I enjoy my World War Twos. Um, I enjoy my Crusade era, my Dark Ages, a little bit of Civil War, but I predominantly stay in that bracket. But I also like doing a bit of sci-fi. Um, I was going through my box the other day, uh, my bits box, and my daughter caught eye of this right here. Uh, Jane Sailor Cult Magos, uh, made by Citadel Miniatures, um, obviously for the 40k universe. So she stayed seeing this and went, I've got a challenge for you, Dad. I was like, all right, and what is it? She says, can you do the six pain challenge? I said, what's that then? So it was basically, her and her brother will go through all my paints and pick out six random paints and I've got to paint this miniature with it. So I'm going to show you now of them going through all my paints and then we'll get cracking on. Let's do this. Green. Mm. Do we have to pick a flesh colour? Up to you. I've got red. Ooh, no, it didn't. So I just got three, so he's sorted. Now you've got to pick one more. Mm -hmm. Three and three make six. So far, so good, isn't it, Dad? You got three colours? Yes. Hey, right, Isaac. Show your three colours under the camera there so people can see. So that's blue. There's nothing left in that one. In that one. So you got one more colour to choose. Oh, he's went through that one. So he's got tie black, blue, and red. And Izzy's got beige, white, and squid pink. There we are. So these are the six colours that the kitties picked. Interesting selection, but let's see what we can come up with. Here we go. So, I'm going to start with the skin. So, the first thing I did was obviously uh, find the model grey and spread a red bone over it. These are the two colours, and the brushes I'll be using is Broken Toad. So, I mixed the squid pink with the black to give us a nice deep colour. This is uh, the start of the skin. This will be the base colour of our skin tones that we're working towards. So, as you can see, I'm just going around hitting all the flesh, flesh points. Um, yeah. And so like I said, just go around the model and make sure you hit all them nice fleshy parts. Right, so under the skin wash now. So I've got the scarlet red and the tire black, done a 50-50 mix and added a few drops of water and use this the applied to the model as you can see here. Uh, important notes with this one is like any other wash, just a bit more important is that uh, look out for pools. Because if they dry, you leave tide marks, and you really don't want that. So yeah, just apply it all over the fleshy parts, um, and just let it sit and dry. Right, so we're starting on our highlights. So what I did was take our base colour for our skin tone, and uh, thin it down slightly more, and then just start applying to the highest points of the model. This will uh, start bringing out our contrast and start getting the shadows where we need them so yeah just apply this all over be patient with it it will work believe us and uh, just keep going at it until you're happy with where you are, all your high points are done
So if it's at uh, this point, I grab the dead white. Uh, I grab me size zero brush, as you see there, and I decided to put on the eyes, dot the eyes in. So what I do, steady hand, keep the paint flowing as best you can, and just dot them on. I find it easy doing this way because I've only got initially two colours on, which is obviously the uh, base skin colour and the basic wash. So yeah, it was easy to do it now, and then a few steps down the line. So yeah. We're going to start working on our skin highlights. So at the minute, my paint ratio is 70 squid pink and 30 tire black. I'm going to start applying this over all the high, the high edges. So the top of the head, nose, cheeks, chin, arms, and the top of the thigh there. As you go along with the highlights, you keep adding squid pink until you're happy with what you're getting. And uh, you keep rolling on with that, you keep applying a bit more brighter colours, brighter colours. Don't worry too much about mistakes, because you can always fix a mistake, you go back a couple of colours. Right, so we're going to move on to our um, the body armor and the staff. So what I did is took the tire black and mixed it down with a bit of water to a wash consistency, and I applied this on all them points. So you got the stuff like you have the body armor, which I'm doing at the minute, uh, going towards the staff, and also hitting the leather boots. Uh, if you want bits darker. Or you think it's a bit too light just take your time again bit of patience it'll dry fast faster than what you think and just reapply till you get that nice color or that you think looks good So once we've done the boots and all that, you should end up with something that looks like this. So as you can see, we've got the initial um, darkening colour on it. Moving into the next one, I'm going to reapply some of the washes to give us some more depth on certain parts of the uh, of the model. So the stuff like the the ribbon around her waist, the back of the whatever that crown thing is, and a few bits more on the staff. So we're going to move into the fabric and cloths and clothes. So what I did is grab the scarlet red, uh, mix it with a bit of the tire black so it gives us a nice uh, dark base colour to work from. And I started applying it. I only applied this paint onto her, the over part of the skirt, um, to her chest and to them arm um, hand pieces of fabric. I have no idea what we call them, but yeah, we applied to all them bits.
Right, so once we've uh, done the chest, we just move on to the arms here, like I said, just to make sure it's uh, everything's matching, and obviously with a limit of colours, I'm just trying to make sure the colour spreads out as much as I can, right. So as you can see here, I'm sort of reapply some of that red over on, on top of what we already done. This is to just make sure that colour's like sharp and it's bold and just enough to pop and everything like that. So yeah, just go around um, and just hit the colours again so, so we get a nice solid base coat on it. So we've been following the steps you should end with something like this so we've blocked in all the red colours uh, the skin should be done the black should be more or less there and um, so yeah we're just going to work on the reds next coming up will be the shadows next up is just like i said there is the shadows so what i did i got the scarlet red and the tire black mix them together give us a good deep red brown color and then i put them to a like a wash consistency and I started applying it straight to the shadows as you can see here. So what you're looking for is all the, the creases in the skirt, the whatever, around the arm, it's just the edges there, just to give it a bit of depth. And obviously in between the uh, in between the skirt flows, if that makes sense. And yeah, just apply it there, keep it thin. So mistakes are easy to uh, clean up. And if you want it a bit more intense, you just apply another layer and just keep doing that. Right, so what I didn't show was when I painted the leather pistol holster. What I did was mix a bit more black into the red mixture to give us a nice uh, red leather colour. Anyway, so if we move on, we're going to move into our first highlights. And our first highlights will be we're going to move going to put more red into the mixture keep it thin almost not quite a wash just a little bit thicker than that and just apply it to the the most exposed parts of the cross keeping them recesses nice and shaded and this will just give a nice gradual build up So obviously remember to do this all over on the fabric parts, uh, this is the start of the highlight so just hitting the upper portions or things you want to be point of interest like that weird hand silk. So we're going to be adding a little bit of white to make this colour pop a bit more so in the in your red mix just add a touch of white but keep it really thin almost like a glaze and just start building up the highlights and coming into the highest points you can see here. It takes a lot of work but it does pay off and it makes makes the the skirt really pop. I think it does anyway. So now we Coming in the extreme highlights, so just add a little bit more white. It'll cut. You want to keep it as reddish as you can, but obviously lighter. And you just want to start hitting those extra high bits, so like the the corners of the folds, the edges of the skirt, the creases. And just hit them, and this will make it uh, pop on the on the tabletop for you. So we're going to move on to the uh, that back tabard that's hanging from a uh, from the pistol. Didn't know what I was going to do with this at the time, so it was a bit of a. Um, I knew I needed to use the blue because the blue hasn't been used yet. So I decided to base the inside of that with blue, and then I was going to do the outside with the black tie wash to match the body armor. This way it would all tie together 
and um, hopefully it'll work out in the end. Here's just to tidy up a few um, edge highlights. Uh, which is where I've touched it with the red paint or the, the black washes over spilled a little bit. It just keeps it tidy for us so you always know what the next step is and you're never behind yourself. So moving forward, um, because I did the tab out with the blue, I decided to do the, the coins and also the test tubes. So what I did, I did a mixture of tire black and the blue to give us a nice dark base colour and I started applying this and all them. So once that was done, I applied a bit more blue to our base mix and started reapplying all the uh, all the blues just to make start just to start the highlight process. Um, particularly on the test tubes and whatnot, I decided to obviously half fill it so it just looked like there was some sort of fluid or whatever the jeans say they're called carry on the waist belts. And we just build up the colours gradually like that, as you'll see in later on in the video. So at this point, uh, your miniature should look something like this if you're following along the steps. So here I'll grab some dead wipe added to our uh, blue mix. And as you can see, I'm starting to do the, the tabard. I'm going to emphasize on the test tube just to make it look like some fluid and I'm also going to edge highlight the coins around the waist. This will help with the coins so they can pop on the model when you look from afar and the test tube will make it obviously look like some sort of substance or something is in there. Right so we added some more white to the mix uh, this is the start of our edge highlight so I'm going down the tab of there, as you can see, I'm just picking out all the little bits, the top raised bits. Also, if you look here, you can see I'm just drawing a very light line across that top bit where the test tubes meet. This will denote like a foamy substance in the test tubes. So grab dead white again and now we're going to do some edge highlight under these tabards or tabard shall I say. So just pick up the sharpest corners and just run your brush all the way down and just pick, pick the highest points out so it sort of gives us some contrast and as you can see there just picking out the tops of the that design there just to make it pop a little bit more. So under the underskirt, um, as you can see I'm pointing here, what I did, well I forgot the film was, I shaded straight little lines using that uh, tire black wash. Right, so I'll grab a white and the tire black wash and now I'm going to start uh, shading in some more of the underskirt, the white underskirt. I'm going to keep this white because I think it's good contrast and colour against the red there. So you can see just keeping it thin, keeping the white thin and I'm just slowly applying it there. You don't want loads of it, obviously it's not a big space and you can see I'm just touching in little bits I've missed here and there as I go along around with the white but yeah you want to keep the white nice and thin so it's nice and flowing so you don't get that chalky effect and I'll just go around clean up the model. So I've decided to do a, a marble effect on the staff so the best thing to do is grab your white paint Thin it down so it flows nice and freely and then just do what I'm doing here and just draw faint lines down. Don't worry if they're too thick in places because the effect will come on as we go along. And then just draw a little, the best way I can describe it really is thin lightning bolts. Not like that wavy line I put in the middle but I'll fix that later on if you watch the whole video. So yeah, just do this all the way around on the shaft. And on the very end of the uh, staff there, and then it'll make more sense. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to grab our tire black wash again and then we're going to apply it over the staff. This will dull down the white but it'll give it the being look in marble. It'll give it that sort of look. It's an easy little way and it cheats the eye and thinking it's marble. Right, so we're going to approach the gems. Same colours as the blue tabard and the, the test tubes. Uh, I could have done this while I was doing that, but I didn't know how I was going to do the gems, so I decided to go with the blue. So same again, we start with the base colour of black and black and blue to get the base colour down, so it's a nice dark shadowy colour. And then we slowly bring it up by using the true blue. We hit the bottom left corners. This will make a nice, um, this will start the gem effect. And then we'll put a touch of white into that one. And then we'll just hit the bottom left hand corners as you can see there. Just a touch. Spin around. Do it in that one and then we'll go to white. And what this is, you hit the top right half of the gem. And this will give a nice white reflection look to it. So also I painted the gem on the staff just white, uh, this will come more apparent later on. Right, so time to do a GW model with the skull on again. So first I've blocked the colour in with the camouflage beige, uh, did the entire skull with this. Then I grabbed our our black wash and washed the entire skull with th this. This has been a lifesaver on this model and it's worked really well. Came back in with the beige uh, and just brought the colours back in but leaving the recesses nice and shaded. So the next step was to add a touch of white into the beige and just start to bring up the highlights on the skull. So the highest points, keep it thin and you just work around the skull there until you got a nice, nice solid skull looking colour for yourselves. And obviously remember, do the nose, the chin the skull sockets and obviously the teeth and just bring them over. So this is where we are now. Um, everything's done, everything's painted, everything's highlighted. If you notice, I've done the base. Uh, this will come apparent in the next step. Right, try, time to do some uh, OSL using dry brushing and glazing. So grab the best makeup brush you can. Uh, you want to use the black and the blue and you want to start brushing away from the light source. If you can think of a bubble and whatever surfaces that light hits, just dry brush it on top and this will be uh, your darkest light. So what we do now is um, we just grab the magic blue, it's colour by itself, and then we do it again but we shrink the bubble to whatever surfaces that one hits, we just highlight with the blue. And now we're going to put a touch of white in, this will be our, like one of our brightest blues. Same game, brush away from the light source and only shrink that bubble. So our final light of the OSL is more white than blue, and same again. But this time you want that bubbles as tiny as you can and away from the light source. This way it'll give it a nice glow effect. Right, uh, moving on to the glazing effect. So you want to mix the, the black and the blue and have it uh, very thin, obviously a glazed consistency. And what we do, we start putting this under the blue areas and just outside. What this does, it'll soften the harshness if you've got any chalkiness on, from the dry brushing phase. Just apply this as many as you need and it'll, it will slowly uh, soften the hard edges and gives it a better look on the whole OSL effect. So 
So once we're completely done with the OSL effect from that light source, um, I decided to do it on the eyes. So what you do, same air glaze effect, keep it nice and thin, but this time we use nothing but blue. And all I did was just tuck it under the eyes, just enough to give it that that magic look about her eyes. And just like that, we are done. So, I enjoyed this challenge. It was, um, it was, it was enjoyable. For the simple fact, I didn't have any metallics. I didn't have any washes. It was just them, them six colours there. And just seeing what I, what I personally could come up with. And to be honest, I don't think she's come up uh, too bad at all. There we go from photos there. I'll do a showcase at the end of this video here. Just to show you what it looks like. But yeah, like I say, it was um it was really enjoyable. Um it's good to push my painting techniques again and obviously using vibrant colours and dull colours in between there. It was just like I say, just a really enjoyable miniature to paint. And quickly moving on, um I'd love to see you guys try it. Put in the comments if you've already um if you've already done something similar to what what I've done here the day. Yeah, so I, like you say, I enjoyed the whole experience of uh, doing this model. Um, it's the first time I've done like um, a miniature painting video. Um, and I've tried a few different things. I hope you enjoy them. I really do. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, so like you say, I'll uh, move on to the showcase and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.